Hey guys, Ethan here. Today I wanted to show you how to do ARM emulation inside of libvirt, uh, vert manager specifically. Um, so this is a Gen 2 oriented guide, but of course you can follow it on any distribution as long as you make uh, minor changes. You'll you'll be able to kind of pick them up as we go and I'll call them out if there are any. So the really uh, the only thing that you have to look at uh, for Gen 2 specifically is you want to make in your make.conf, you want to add QEMU soft MMU targets to support ARM and QEM user targets also to support ARM and then recompile QEMU itself. And once you do that, we have vert manager. And if we go to create a virtual machine right here, we can check the uh, architecture options, which will now be appearing if it didn't before. And we're going to select ARM V6L and machine type we're going to scroll down to the very bottom to the v section where we do versatile pb and say forward now for the os we're going to do a generic os and memory is capped at 256 megabytes and one cpu for the specific kind of vm we don't want storage for this vm so we want to disable it and we're going to have to give it a name i'm going to call this rpi os since i'm going to be testing this with raspbian feel free to name it whatever you want though when we're done, we're going to say customize configuration. We're going to head through for the CPU configuration. We want ARM 1176. Inside of boot options is where things get interesting. So we're going to enable direct kernel boot and we need to choose a kernel and choose a DTB, which is a device tree blob. And this is a special file that will contain all of, I guess, the necessary firmware. I'm not sure if it's actually firmware, but it's stuff that's basically uh, specific for your system. So in this case, you want one for QEMU for ARM. So if we go here, I'll be linking these in the description. First things first is QEMU RPI kernel. This is a GitHub repository that contains everything we need. So in this case, it has the DTBs and the kernels. If we open up a terminal, and in this case, I should actually have an RPI directory already that I've worked with, clone the repository, and we're going to head inside of it. Uh, Actually, I should show the git clone process, which is just this. That's how I got it. But you should know how to do that by now. Anyways, inside of here, we want to go ahead and grab a kernel, and we want to grab a device tree blob. So let's grab the kernel first. So what we're going to do is we're going to print the working directory, and then we're going to copy the path. And then we're going to go back to QEMU, paste the path. We're going to do it for both the kernel and the DTV, and make sure to append the slash and we're going to choose the kernel, which in this case I'm going to do 5.4.51 buster. And then the device tree blob, which we're going to do buster as well. And we're not going to do 5.4.51, but it might work. I don't know. This is just what I've been using. So there we go. And now what we need to do is set kernel args. So we've dealt with this before in our Gen 2 install video. But the process is just to type root equals slash dev slash VDA2. And the V indicates that we're using a vert IO disk. If you're using SDA, then make sure to make this say SDA2. But again, we're going to go with VDA. Now for the NIC, we want to make sure that this is set to vert IO. Uh, when it's on hypervisor default, it just fails. And now we're going to go ahead and deal with the disk. So to get a working disk, we need to download Raspbian as an image. So if we go here, and we're going to be linking this as well and scroll down, we're going to find Raspberry Pi OS downloads. This is the one I chose, the Pi OS with desktop. Go ahead and download this, and you will get the resulting file. It'll be a zip file. You can type unzip and the name of the file, and it will give you the IMG. Now, you can use the IMG itself, but in this case, we actually want to convert this to a QCOW2. The way you convert this to a QCOW2, and I realize I should have zoomed this in a bit, is QEMU IMG convert dash F raw dash O QCOW2 and then the initial file and the expected output file. And to cover this with command really quickly, QEMU IMG is a binary that deals with everything to do with QEMU images. Convert is the command that we're going to be using in this case or the option. And it's going to convert IMG to QCOW2 and vice versa. Dash F is the format that we're using initially like the start format and the dash o which is capital by the way is the output which in this case is qcow2 
and then we're going to give it the first file, which is the IMG, and the second file, which we expect, which is going to be QCOW2. So go ahead and run that command and give it just a moment. And now we're going to have a new QCOW2 file. Next, we're going to use IMG, uh, QEMU IMG resize, and then we're going to give it the QCOW2 file and do plus 20G. And what this does is just make the QCOW2 plus 20 gigabytes larger, since IMG files are typically only a few gigabytes. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and print the working directory once again, copy the location, and head back to Vert Manager. We want to add hardware, select or create custom storage, and set this to Vert I.O. Now we want to paste in the directory, and then copy the name of the file itself, and finish. And this is going to go ahead and add the Vert I.O. disk, and you can see that it picks up the 23 gigabytes that it has. Now at this point, we're nearly finished, so we're going to go ahead and add a graphics, which in this case, we're going to do a Spice server. We're going to do video, and we're going to leave it as vert IO in this case, but you might be able to get away. Actually, that's tough. I think we'll go with vert IO this time, but if that doesn't work, play around with it. I did do a video actually talking about um, what to use for what situation, and ARM does have a specific one. I believe it's RAM FB, but you can go ahead and check on that if you're not sure sound we're going to do ICH9 and at this point we're basically done. Uh, you might also want to add a channel for spice but I'm not sure if that's necessary in this case. So we're going to begin the installation and we might have to tweak it depending on if it starts or not and it looks like it did start but it had a kernel panic and in this case that's actually mostly the kernels issue. So we're going to go ahead back into boot options and we're going to change which kernel we're using. And I've had the best luck in the past with version 5.14 buster so I'm going to copy that and give it a second try. There we go. Okay so 5.41 is the kernel that you want to use with Raspbian. And again ARM is not very simple when it really comes down to it because you have to find what kernel is right for you, what DTBs are right for you for every situation, the IMGs, and it can be kind of difficult to work with sometimes. So while this guide is covering the process for Raspbian, it might be different depending on what OS you're planning on installing under ARM. So this isn't going to be a perfect guide, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding of how these things work. With that being said, it is booting and it will be working. Uh, the only issue though is that this will be like extremely slow. Because you're emulating, it's going to be as if you did not use KVM. It's really not pleasant to use. So I wouldn't recommend using this in any situation that you don't need to. But again, this is the process of doing it. To prevent this video from going any longer while this loads, I'm going to cut it off here. But that was the guide and that is how everything works. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join my Discord and ask me there. If you want to join my community, like I said, Discord link is in the description already. Leave this video a like if you liked it and maybe subscribe if you want to see some more of my content. Anyways, I'll see you later. Bye bye